parts that you can see now date back to about 250 million years ago. And this part of New England was then looked a little bit like East Africa at the moment. The continent had lifted and was starting to pull apart. And as it pulled apart, a big block dropped down. And, and there were highlands, so the uh, sediment off the highlands washed in and filled uh, the valleys. So what we're in now in the Connecticut Valley is was once a uh, the bottom of a, of a big rift. The it was high because there was molten rock welling up underneath, and some of that escaped uh, to close to the surface. And the actual uh, rock of West Rock is uh, magma that that intruded between two layers of sediment to a, a thickness of several hundred feet and cooled in place. So what you can see here are in the um, parking lot at, at Amity, if you know where to look, which I don't exactly, there is the boundary between the much older rocks that are uh, about 500 million years old and these newer uh, rift sediments that, that came in. And up that slope here, you can see a boundary between the um, the igneous rock, the, the diabase of, of West Rock, and the and the red sedimentary rocks that we see here and see up to much of the uh, Connecticut Valley. Um, this rift that ends here in New Haven also goes up right to the uh, Massachusetts, uh, Vermont, New Hampshire uh, border. Ninety one pretty much follows it. Um, and New Haven was a place where actually three rifts came together, the one that goes up 91. The other two, which opened for a while and then stopped spreading, the other two rifts continued to spread and became the Atlantic Ocean. So uh, we actually just missed here being uh, uh, pulled apart and, and in Europe instead of in, in North America. <laughs> And the, the, those red sediments that are underneath here are the ones like if you go to Dinosaur Park at Rocky Hill have the dinosaur footprints in them and occasionally there are places where you find the footprints. So there have been one of these sort of interbedded layers, there are red sediments and then some of these lavas like West Rock or the igneous rocks and then more of the sediments with dinosaurs and other it's stuff. Big, in it's trap rock, right? It's just a big couple of puzzle pieces put together. If you take all the soil away, it's just yeah. pieces to a puzzle, yeah. right? And Not actually, lot. in in the uh, red s sediments here, which are all laid down not under the ocean, but in shallow lakes or in mud flats on the continent, uh, if you can sometimes in places see annual bands in the sediment, and if you look through those, you can see how they get gradually thicker with time and muddier, and then thinner and and sandier, and this has actually been recognized to be changes in climate on about a 20,000 year cycle, similar to the, driven by the same forces in the Earth's orbit that drive current glacial cycles. But we can see actually here in these red beds, patterns of global climate change going back 250 million years that follow about the same periodicity as the, the glaciers have over the last million years to so the surface of the land. So we're going to be okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> now there were there were seven billion people when it was doing all that. Right, right, right. All different. That we know of. Yeah. <laughs> Where's the, the land trust person here? Yeah. Okay. I, I'll show you. I want to identify where that land trust property is. 